Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Anulua Adibanjo. If you are new here, kindly subscribe to this channel, turn on your notification bell so that you can always get notified each time I upload new content. So, if you are a returning subscriber, you are definitely an OG and thank you for coming back. In this video, I'll be taking you on a trip with me to the Benin Republic to some awesome attractions in Benin Republic. Um, this was at the border, the semi border. So this was the point where we were about to cross in the semi border. Now we were delayed for the longest, for the longest time, and um, despite carrying an institutional bus, a federal institution bus, we were delayed for the longest, you know. But eventually, anyway, we were able to pass through. So this was after we got to Benin Republic, and we wanted to exchange money. This is me looking so stressed. So we eventually exchanged it here because the exchange rate here was fair in comparison to the first place. The first place wanted to exchange with us at the rate of 420 to 1000 naira, 420 to 1000 naira. But this place exchanged at the rate of 390. So yeah. And this was on our way to our first point in Porto Novo. Our first point was the Songhai Farms and um, this is the point where we were about entering into the Songhai Farms. So the Songhai Farms is located in Port Novo in Benin Republic. Okay? Uh, it's a large expanse of land where integrated farming system is being practiced. Later on in this video, as this video moves on, you're going to be seeing in-depth view of the Songhai Farms. So this was the point where we went to the fish pond, the earthen pond, and then we were shown the fish. So the fish here are tilapia and, um, and the catfish, right? Both are being read in the same pond. You know, we asked how come the cannibalism does not exist, you know, and they told us the fish are well fed, so they have no cause to to eat to eat each other to eat one another so because they are well fed they don't practice cannibalism so here are some of the trees you know planted within the songai farm palm kernels and then um, they were telling us you know some of the things that these palm kernels are used for and all of that so you can see the processing area and this is the cage for birds so they have quills they have quills in there here they have free range for turkey dogs and some chickens as well so they have a free range system for rearing them this is our free range unit free range unit which is the combination of uh, uh, breeding of the and And this is the point where you know ram, goats, etc., have been read. So they have a whole lot of them in here. Another free range area for for dogs, for turkeys, and birds like that. This is another cage area for quills. And this is an artificial mulching area. So they do this artificial mulching to prevent um, weed. So you can see another artificial mulching, but with with crops in there. So they prevent weed through this artificial mulching system. 
so it's used to prevent, to prevent um, weeds from growing alongside the main crop the main plants they also use wind energy and this is the greenhouse this is the greenhouse a very large area and here are some nurseries you know, some trees being planted in polythene bags so here is the hotel within the, the farm so that tourists can lodge in so it's a, it's a big lodging anyway so they also have ostrich they have ostriches in them as part of the the birds that they are rearing within the, the songhai farms they have a large catholic church as well within the songhai farms they have horses and donkeys also um, in another separate area so like i said it's it's a large it's a large expanse of land and they have all sorts of animals for rearing and also plants and here is like the mini mats okay, where products from the farm are being sold so some of the 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 produce are made into products that are sold inside this mat so they have all sorts from um, from oil like vegetable oil to to fruits made items juice and all of those things and they have snacks they have peanuts they have nuts they have grand nuts you know and all sort of they have jam you know all sort of consumables so this is us leaving Port Novo and heading into another part of the Benin Republic so here we are in Bida at the snake temple the python snake temple uh, the python temple as you may want to put it now here is mainly for pythons So this is us walking into the Python temple. This is the point of entrance. So there is a curator there or a tour guide as you may want to put it and it is explaining things to us hello everyone welcome in the python's temple i'm dj alubi here you are in a sacred place that existed since 13th century swallowing technology they're not that big they can't squeeze or swallow human beings so due to that the master went for five minutes all right, so here we are in front of the sanctuary, it's one of the most sacred places of the temple. So, yesterday it is open because today is a market day. So, market is here like every three days, and it's on like Sunday. So, what you can notice here is that it's very low. Like here before someone goes and he has to kneel. So that is a proof of respect and humility toward the God. So inside we have uh, more than 50 pythons in. Alright, we have more than 50 pythons in. Like they are not all that we have here. 
still have a lot of them in the wild also. You know, pythons here, they are not like in prison. We let them out also. So like, we don't feed them here and it's because of their nature of constriction. Like before they swallow something, like they have to squeeze it to death before swallowing. So that's why we can't provide them like dead rats. They can't squeeze them if they are dead. And we can also give them little rats. You know? Rats, when they're alive, they move a lot. So naturally, pythons, they have their own strategies of getting the rat themselves. You know, you know no one hurts or kills pythons. Everyone respects and protects them. And it takes pythons a lot of time to digest also. It takes them like four to five weeks like that. That's why we open the door uh, twice a month or twice a month. Like the first time the door will be open, there will be some who will not leave, but some will leave. So the second the second time, the one who didn't leave, like the second time they came over the town. They are brought by the dwellers. Like they don't come back on their own like that. It is real. Just like the one who didn't go far away came back in the temple. That's all. So it's just the dwellers that are just bring them here. Okay, okay, so you said we have to stay oh, here. To do. Ah. Oh, you are alone in class now. Are you So at this point, there is the opportunity to put the snake around your neck if you wanted to. But first, you have to purify your hands. Um, there is a, a leaf in a water that they use to purify your hands before you can be allowed to touch or have this or have the python around your neck. Okay. So here are some of the people that I traveled that I went on tour with. It's a group tour. So having the snake around their necks. Well, I didn't, I didn't put the snake around my neck because um, I just didn't want to. So, um, but, you know, some other people wanted to have the snake around their necks, which they did. Okay. So, um, people had different reactions, different experiences, but it was all well and good. The snakes don't bite. Okay? So... It was more or less no risk at all so if you wanted to try you could try if you do go visiting the python temple in Guida then it will probably okay This is the house the snakes are being kept. There are thousands of them in there. I didn't go in, but people who went in did say that there were just so much of them in there. So they also had souvenirs. The three calabash you can see were going to be sold for 20,000 sefas last price. That's around 50,000 naira. So yeah, so they had different souvenirs there. And um, this was the slave trade route in Benin Republic. So we visited the slave trade route. Okay, this is the route in which uh, slaves were being taken through during the slave trade period. So if you watched my previous video on my visit to Badagri, the original slave relics museum, um, you would realize that the stories were sort of intertwined, they were related. So um, Nigeria had a slave trade route which was located in Badagri and um, there is also another in Benin Republic. So um, the stories linked up somehow 
it's an interconnected story of slave trade. The, 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 the response to this question, this question that's why the name of the influence master slave in the West African country, country you see his name. Just write the name of the influence slave master in the West African. Now, this is one of the monuments that was yet to be commissioned, which is why it's still being wrapped up. But we're given the opportunity to take pictures, to take video, and it's depicted the period where um, slaves are being marked, you know, where irons, hot irons were being used to mark slaves um, to show that, you know, they are from this master or they are from that master. So this is the wall of lamentation. Here, a lot of slaves um, were buried. A lot of slaves were buried in there. And, and according to them, to the curator, in the early 2000s slash late 90s, there were usually cries of people, wailings of people being heard from there. Like people whose voices the dead ones were being heard clearly from there. People with babies, you know, babies crying, mothers lamenting from there, which is why they call it the wall of lamentation. But as time went on, as time went by, I think some sacrifices, some rituals were made and then um, the spirits were put to rest. So um, as at the time we went there and even for many years, they haven't, um, they haven't um, experienced such. So, um, this is the tree of uh, return, the tree of return, a very large tree. Also, um, marks it a quite significant symbol in there. So um, this is the point of no return. If you watched my previous video, there is a point of no return in Badagri, Nigeria as well. So this is the point of no return for the slave trade route in the Republic. Okay, behind this is also a vast sea. Okay, that you cannot seem to see its end. So I'd leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. Um, do well to, to like, to share, to leave your comments for me. I'd love to hear back from you. Did you enjoy watching this video? And these are some of the things that they sold at the point of no return as a form of souvenir. So these were made with seashells. Anyway, this was where we lodged in Benin Republic. It's like an apartment building. Each place had a sort of its own unit and all that. So yeah, thank you for watching. I remain Anulua Adibanjo and this has been everything really true with Anulua Adibanjo. Thank you.